yeah, I think this battery's too old. I'm gonna have to go try and exchange it. I just put this on the charger last night and brought it up to 100%. And this morning it's back down to 75, which is where it was when I bought it. And it keeps it keeps going back down to 75 every time I put the charger on in the morning. Because I'm just trying to maintain it and take care of it. And I also wanted to see if this was going to happen since it was old to begin with when I bought it off the shelf. It's like four or five months old or something. You know, I wanted to see how it was gonna, if it was gonna hold up, and it's not. I hate batteries. That was not so pretty. Right, so I've got strings set up on both sides and I've got it pulled tight to where it just touches the front half of the back tire makes that line straight same thing on this side got a line pulled tight on the back tire as it just touches the front half of the sidewall I measure this tire to the string 
so we know that this is straight ish enough to the back tire do the same thing to this tire measure it straight ish to the string then we come down here and we adjust this tie rod accordingly to fit onto the new location First try, are you pooping me right now? What? Let me double check my measurements. All right, measurements check out for now. So we'll start, uh, we'll stop there for this side and uh, move on to the other side. I'm gonna have to drill a hole through this. This bolt isn't long enough to catch the night lock. So I'll drill a hole through it, put a cotter pin in it. And now that this side's tightened in place, we can um, do the other side and then measure it up to this tire. And hopefully all stays the same when we go down the road. Okay, I drew some lines. I put the brackets up here and scraped some lines with the screwdriver there so I can get a lot closer than I did last time. And we'll just, uh, we don't have to go much on the bottom side. It's that simple. File it down and if necessary. Ooh, I cut that one a lot better. Not a ton of filing on this one. Just a little bit right there. Uh, see how much vibration you guys experience from this. Could have been prettier. All right, I got them carved out. Not too bad. A lot easier the second time on the second knuckle than it was on the first knuckle because you know now I know what to do.
Well, dang it, it is raining. I'm gonna let this cool off. It didn't weld that good to the cast iron in there because I didn't scrape away the paint. I wasn't really planning on welding there, but whatever. On the outside, here though, and here, it welded really good. And around there and on the other side. So this is gonna hold just as good as the other side. Now, maybe neither one's gonna hold at all, but <laughs> they'll both fail together. All right, I've got it all back together. Almost all back together, actually. I forgot I did not put the cotter pin or the dust cap in the axle side, so dang it. We're gonna have to wait for the rain to stop because I'm not already tightened the rim, the lug nuts. I'm not doing this in the rain right now. But I am curious to see if I got uh, my turning radius back. See. Okay, so aligning it in the air was not a good idea. It gave me a good starting point to get the tires evened out, I guess, or or similar. But when I put it on the ground, they were severely towed out. I took it for a drive last night, or just tried to take it for a drive, like back it out, and it's like uh, 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 skipping off the front tire so I pulled it right back in here and got out and looked at it and the tires were just super towed out so I put up these levels and some tape measures I've got about an eighth inch closer in the front than I do in the back and that's just about a two foot difference apart so hopefully that'll get me started Bird
take it in, let the pros look at all my crappy welding job. Man, you guys love to hate on me, don't you? I know the welds aren't perfect, but Jiminy. Yeah, a little skip in there. Oh, I might not need a steering quickener. Okay, well, after some driving around, um, there's some scrubbing when I make some turns. And so I checked the measurement like this with the tire straight, and I'm a sixteenth of an inch in on the front. I'm a sixteenth of an inch towed in using a four foot level. When I take measurements from one end of the level to the other, I clamp the thing I clamped the level up here in there and measured it a quarter inch away from the rim so the rubber isn't throwing me off at all and I was a sixteenth of an inch in I went for a drive came back, brought it on the ramps checked it again, measurements stayed the same great, problem was when I turned up there the I heard the outside tire scrubbing so I turned it all the way to the right and I laid these out, eyeballed them close enough to being in line with the tires and taking some measurements in this front one, the front measurement is 71 inches and that's like 76 and a half. So that's five and a half inch difference. This means this outside tire when I'm turning right in this case wants to make a sharper circle than the inside tire and that's obviously wrong. The outside tire should be making a larger circle. This number should be smaller than the one in front when we're turned all the way. And we've got another problem. Just touches, the, the bolt just touches the bushing there, but we are, the knuckle is at lock on the other side, so that was a squishiness I was feeling when I get all the way to the lock I felt like something squishy well my bolts running into that link arm at the same time but my solution or my attempt to fix this is actually to get rid of these spacers if I get rid of these spacers and push the whole thing back if this wheel is already touching the lock, then that means all that straightening out is going to push towards that tire or the outside tire. And I don't know if it's going to fix it 100%, but it should make it a little better at least. And keep the bolts just enough, hopefully just enough to keep the bolts from hitting the those, those links. And the other issue is, of course, that's only one inch spacer. And I moved the brackets over here two and a half inches. So we're not gonna get everything back. But uh, you know, I'm curious now. I never took that measurement uh, with the sticks at a full turn in the way it was before with the tie rods at the front of the knuckles. So I'm wondering if it was messed up at all to begin with. Okay, with them back in the front positions, both sides, we're at 73 and 5 eighths. The difference here is I can't get lock to lock because the rack is limiting my radius again. So, but we'll still see if there's a difference front and back. And the back's about 75 and a quarter. So yeah, there is a difference still. Just less than two inches. So that's why I was never really able to feel it, probably. My turning radius was so large to begin with, and it's only a two inch difference. Um, we'll call it lock to lock still, even though it's not fully lock to lock. It's like rack end to rack end. So now the next step is to remove those um, spacers and I'm actually going to do it with it with the tie rod still in the front position just to see if we get a change in these numbers here 
And the other other problem is this spot here is going to run into the frame there. So I got to elongate this hole uh, so this will sink in past that. And then hopefully I've got room here in this hole for that to drop down because pretty, ow, that's hot. It's pretty much at the top. Okay, let's pull this out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this actually because, well, because I don't know. So, <clears throat> come on over there. Almost, almost, oh no. Come back to me, come back to me. Well, it took me the rest of the evening to get it out, and we are back to pouring rain again. But I did finally get it out. I had to just, I cut the edge of it off so the heating and expanding part would actually work. So that's off, one side's off, and I think I've got an idea to kind of replace these ends that have the one inch spacer there that I'm trying to get rid of. So I've got a poop ton of these giant washers. Since I can't seem to find uh, solid aluminum um, plugs for, for like mounts anymore for a Mustang 2 rack and pinion, it's all rubber. And Chassis Engineering, who used to sell these, uh, no longer has these available, unfortunately. Um, or else I just order up another set and have the machine shop turn them down for me. Same people that turn down the aluminum bushings for the leaf springs in the back of that for the Caltrax kit. But I do have these washers 
that uh, I'll bore out the centers to the right diameter because they have to fit over the slug that's coming out of the cross member and then I just stick this bolt through it and try to grind down the outer diameter to match you know this basically so it'll fit inside the rack so it'll fit inside the rack it'll fit over the slug or stud that's coming out of the cross member and do the same job as this but without this one inch spacer Hopefully that's the plan, but we'll see. So earlier when I was saying you guys love to hate is it's those welds on that cast iron. I know it's not right. I know this. You guys all know this, but you know, it's all right. You guys got to make sure that I'm keeping myself and others safe. And it is a real danger. I understand that. Uh, I'm not going, I don't plan on going out on you know the roads right away and go real fast I'm gonna put it through some rigorous testing and see if it starts cracking or coming apart uh, also though at the same time if you know where there's a spindle kit out there that has those shorter uh, steering arms or Ackerman arms I've heard people you know either way gotta have the stubby arms right basically where I located mine two and a half inches further back from stock that perfectly i mean i eyeballed where the outer tie rod needed to go in order for me to be able to hit lock to lock on the spindle and not bottom out on the tie rack at the same time man i nailed it two and a half inches back from stock position that's the spot so if i could find some you know safe spindles i've been thinking about trying to make my own just been thinking it would require a lot of of like yeah time to draw it up find some U joints I don't know if yeah I don't know that's what it would take I don't know if I could use factory uh, ball joints I mean or if I need to search for something after market I don't know if those welds will hold forever but I'm also thinking about putting in some other bolts um, right through the middle of the brackets that kind of lock it in place so it won't swing out even if the welds do crack they won't give out and hopefully I'll catch it before there's a serious accident but this is all just kind of I mean it's all testing it's you know what else is a guy to do I mean I'm on my own out here I gotta figure things out on my own because if spindles were out there available to buy I wouldn't be trying to weld come on guys Ooh, my son got some new handlebars pretty sweet He's doing backflips out cement bowls here at the park. You take a kid to Woodward one time, I swear. But anyway, it's football Sunday. It's Lions versus Buccaneers right now, halftime. Game is like tied up. Who knows who's going to win. The winner of this one goes on to play the Niners in the Bay next week. Uh, but that's going to have to be it for this weekend because of that, you know, and I got a game to go watch. Um, and I've also was thinking about, and the rain was sucky too, so I lost a couple days, but I think I found a solution for the steering rack. It's not perfect like most of my fixes. It's gonna be a little ghetto, but for testing purposes, it should get us by. Uh, but that's gonna have to be next week. We'll finish that up if it works or not. We're gonna switch gears either way and work on the Magnum. There's a couple things I need to do to it. So until next time, guys, uh, have a good one. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please hit the bell, please comment, all that good stuff. Because thank you so much for getting me to 10,000 subscribers. It's so awesome. Keep it up, guys. I appreciate it. Peace.